as an electrician, I have a large assortment of hand tools I carry for a variety of projects, but realistically, most homeowners aren't going to have a use for all of these. But there are some projects I go over that you can tackle yourself, such as replacing a light fixture or changing out a receptacle. So I want to show you what some of these hand tools are and how to pick them. Now the most important thing to do before you start any electrical project is to be sure the power is off. Now to do this we can use a voltage tester and there are several kinds to use depending on what you're working on. So we'll start with this. This is a plug-in tester that we use on a receptacle. It's easy enough to plug in, see if it lights up. If it does, it'll tell us there's power. If not, it should be de-energized. If you're working on a wire you're tracing out, you're not sure if it's live, or a light fixture, even if the bulb's out, you can use a no contact tester. Turn that on, if it's just the green light, no power. If you touch the wire, or pull it up to the side of the wire, and it starts to chirp and turns red, it means it still has power there. So in this case, we're gonna replace the receptacle. I'm gonna plug the tester in, just to make sure it's off. No lights, so we're good. Next, I'll start by taking the plate off. Now that we have that off, we'll use a Phillips screwdriver to take the device out. So now we can take the device out and we can see we have our black wires on the brass screws, that's our hot, our white wires on the silver screw, that's our neutral, and our bare ground wire on the green screw, that's our ground. Now, you can see on this, the wires are really fairly short and they're a little bit difficult to work with. So I always like to cut them off and start fresh. And if we do this with short wires, we're gonna to need to extend this. So what we can do is take the lineman pliers, cut these off one at a time, and then we'll take the strippers and get a little bit of the insulation stripped off. Now, because the wire is so short, I wanna add a piece to this called a pigtail. So what I'll do is I'll take another piece of Romex so we can pull the two conductors out that we want Strip that. And then we're gonna take the line once again. And what you wanna do is you wanna line up the cuts of the insulation together. You don't care so much that the length of copper might be different, but you want the insulation to be at the same spot when you twist them. And when you twist, you wanna gently twist and kinda of pull away at the same time. Then trim it off flush. Install the wire nut. And then you can safely fold that to the back, get it out of the way, and now you can see you have plenty of wire to work with. So we'll do the same thing for the hut. Again, just fold that to the back. So now that I know I have plenty, I'm gonna go ahead and trim it to the length I wanna use. So the next thing we want to do is put the loop on the end of this so we can put that around the screw and tighten that down. Again, a couple of ways to do it. You can still use these same strippers. Sometimes, and I prefer to, I have a heavy set of needle nose that just makes it a little easier and faster and more stable for me. So now we'll start by putting the grounding wire on. And you can see that we have this loop bent going with the screw. We want to put this around clockwise. I'm using the needle nose to tighten that loop up so it's tight around that screw. Next, we'll do the same thing for the neutral. We'll install the hot conductor. And lastly, before we get ready to install it, we're gonna go ahead and use a torque screwdriver to actually torque these screws to the right setting. On this device, it's somewhere between 14 and 16 inch pounds. So you hear that pop? Tells you it's where it wants to be. All right. Now it's time to actually install it back in the wall. And I have one of the little trick I wanna show you for making this nice and secure. These little tabs, are flexible and you can actually take a pair of pliers just give them a little bend backwards and the reason is as you start to install this these ears will connect the drywall first when it does that as you tighten it more and more 
It makes it very secure. It keeps it from sliding side to side when you go to plug something in. You're not relying on just the plate holding it in place anymore. And that keeps it nice and rugged. And finally, we'll put the plate back on and test the fit. Nice even reveal. And we'll go ahead and screw this back on. After that, turn the power back on and test it. So to recap, we'll just go over the tools that a homeowner should have in their basic electrical kit. The voltage testers, obviously, a plug-in one and a touchless one. Next would be the wire strippers. This set is my given choice. They have a lot of features on them that you may not realize. The first being is you can actually strip the jacket on an M cable. So 14-2 and 12-2, peel the jacket right off very quickly and easily. You can also strip the individual conductors like we showed. When you go to wrap the wire around a screw, you can use the teeth and bend that loop very easily as well. Every once in a while, you might need something else, something with larger gauge wire that you need to strip, some other combinations that have the flat head as well. So pick what's comfortable for you. But for me, this would be the most common one to use. I'd also grab a set of needle nose. It just makes it easier to do certain projects. If something's in a tight area, if you need to wrap around a screw inside of a box, this makes it much easier. And finally, screwdrivers. A huge selection of screwdrivers, a lot of options. You can keep it simple to start. One of my favorites is always the multi-tool screwdriver. And they've come a long way. These aren't the bits that you used to lose that you'd store in the handle. This is a much different setup with a lot more flexibility. It's actually a nut driver in there as well. Will do most of what you need. Also like a couple of standard ones. Something like this for the plates is easier. A simple straight blade. Lastly, one of the screwdrivers that you may not be that familiar with, but it's not a bad thing to have around for multiple uses, is a torque screwdriver. You can put a bunch of different bits in it, and it's really good when you're not positive whether you're cranking down on screws on a device strong enough or too strong. A uh, manufacturer will have a spec for you to use. It'll tell you what to set it. And what you do is you actually turn this dial, set the level of inch pounds that you want this to go to, lock it back in, and when you tighten it, it'll click and pop when it's at the right spot. It's a nice little item to have in the home toolkit. So all in all, these will be my choices for your tools for an electrical home project. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.